Welcome to Module 2, How to Use Seam Tools. In the last video, we discussed seam tools, what they are, and why they should be used. In this video, we'll expand on this and discuss further in depth how to use seam tools for logging and other activities. For your next pre-assessment question, true or false? You need an understanding of the incident response process in order to ex effectively use seam tools. If you answer true, you're correct. An understanding of the incident response process is paramount in using seam tools. It's important to be able to discern which logging data matters and when something doesn't look quite right. Learning to apply the cyber kill chain and encouraging your organization to establish triage steps are some critical steps in utilizing seams effectively. So how do I use seam tools? It's important to know which data matters. If all operational data is collected, we'd have an information overload consisting of hundreds of thousands of events per second. This would be exhausting and nearly impossible to sift through. Therefore, we need to determine what assets are critical that we need to pull information from. This can include different servers, routers and switches, firewalls, antivirus, intrusion detection systems, active directory logs, etc. Seams typically offer customized dashboards per analyst. A good habit is to create a view that suits your needs. Avoid the common pitfall of becoming a log report repository for your organization. Another important part of knowing how to use seam tools is to know when certain data is generated. This is understanding patterns and the impact that they might have on your organization. It's important to be able to discern whether a piece of log data is benign, a threat, or an incident. When you encounter a piece of log data, it will often be tagged with an event code and have other information included, such as time, frequency, user information, etc. Based on this information, you should be able to look back through log activity and determine whether this is normal activity for the network or user or process or if it's unusual. If it's unusual activity, you can use surrounding logs and data to gather clues and evidence to further investigate. Logging events in temporal proximity of events of interest is extraordinarily helpful when needing to escalate events. Most seams support baselines, which can be helpful in identifying events that do not occur frequently, but do occur consistently. Seams often include alarms and alerts that can also be configured to alert on key events. For example, if an administrator login in a production machine happens at an unusual time outside of what normally happens, It'll set off an alarm, or you can configure it to set an alarm off so that you're notified. More complex events and related events can be condensed into correlated events, which we'll discuss later on in some of the labs. Another important part of knowing how to use SEAM tools is understanding the incident response process. This is a process that begins with preparation and has six steps that lead to lessons learned. Preparation is where most of the legwork needs to be done when responding to an incident. A lot of incident response is in making sure that employees and staff are trained to handle when an incident arises. For example, if a person on a surgical table in a hospital setting were to code, then you would want the doctors and nurses to be trained in resuscitation, right? Information security response is very much the same. A well-documented plan and trained team will make a huge impact. Identification will be how you determine whether or not you have been breached. The stage relies largely, largely on asking questions and gathering relevant information in order to determine the scope and kind of what systems might have been affected by the breach. The third step, containment, is to keep the scope of the breach or attack as small as possible. This could include removing connected devices, updating and patching systems, reviewing remote access protocols, changing user and admin credentials, and just general system hardening as well. Anything that can be done in order to mitigate what is going on with the breach or the attack, etc., is going to be helpful in this stage. Number four, eradication, is where the action kind of happens. This is once the issue is contained, the root cause of the breach needs to be explored and it needs to be removed, and all pieces of this need to be removed. Think of it as cancer in your system, and it's... It just, every piece needs to be gone or else it's going to continue to grow and spread and just disease your system. So, um, entire removal of anything that is lending itself to the breach or the attack, etc., 
is going to be necessary at this stage. Number five, recovery, is the practice of returning systems to production and resuming business as usual once the threat is eliminated. And finally, number six is lessons learned. This is so important. It's so important to analyze and document what was learned during the breach, as well as to review plans and revise them as needed to make sure that future responses are just as, if not more efficient. I am a firm believer that something can be learned from every incident response. Rarely is anything foolproof. And now for a brief summary. In today's lecture, we discussed how to use seam tools and the importance of which data to target and when certain types of data are generated. We also discussed the steps of this incident response process and how it relates to seam tools.